trumpet players. Today we're talking about endurance on the trumpet because it's a real problem among trumpet players and it doesn't need to be a problem. I'm going to answer your questions on the topic in this video right now. I'm happy to be with you today. Um, some of the problems that we're having um, on the trumpet include not being able to practice for an hour, and this is what you're telling me. Um, you you, you want to be able to uh, last in rehearsals. You want to be able to last in your performances. And you also want to know what are some of the exact exercises that we can practice to improve our endurance. Is it only long tones or are there other things? And so that's what we're talking about today. Um, if you want to be on the show today, then click the link in the description. You can click the link. You'll be put in the waiting room. I'll see you right here on my screen, and I'll let you be on the show if you have a question and you want to be on the screen. I do have a request that you mute your video so that there's not a, a loop of an audio loop. All right. Now, if you don't want to be on screen and you still have a question, just put it in the comment section and I'll get to it. Put four question marks in front of your question so that it catches my eye. All right. Um, that's good. And I, that's all I wanted to say. I want to take a moment right now to say hello to some people I see in the chat. I see Lewis. He says, good afternoon, Chris. It's good to see you, Lewis. And um, I see Raul. Nice to see you, Raul. Welcome back. All right. And I see Cardoso. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to repeat that. <laughs> All right. And you got a question already. Wonderful. Eli, it's good to see you too. All right. So I have some pre, uh, I have some questions that were sent in. I'm going to start with that. Give you guys some time to write your questions in the comment section. And if you want to be on the screen, you can click the link in the comments. All right. But I got some questions that some people sent in ahead of time. I'm going to start with that. Uh, and here we go. Yeah. Thank you for the like. I appreciate that. Here's the first question of the day. It says, as a hobbyist, what are the best types of exercises to help improve endurance? And I want to say whether you are a hobbyist or a professional or anything in between, you're going to practice the same exercises. The difference is in the difficulty of those exercises. Uh, what are they? Long tones, lip slurs, um, uh, technical studies. This is what we practice. It doesn't change for really anybody except the difficulty does change. So I'm going to give you a little background on this question. It says I'm not a professional, just an adult player who plays for fun, uh, very occasional gigs. And for those of us who may not have the time to put in multiple practice sessions a day, what are the best types of exercises we can do to help improve endurance? Um, and so my answer is discipline yourself to play your fundamentals every day. It doesn't need to take a long time to practice your fundamentals. So I understand you're not trying to be pro. You know, there's a certain level you're not even really trying to attain. But if you do have a concern about endurance, you need to practice your fundamentals every day. And that's really the short answer. We could just end this live session right now, and that would help so many people. Um, trumpet, if, if trumpet is a hobby for you, then I'm going to recommend that you take up to 10 minutes of your practice time to play fundamentals. And that really comes out to about 10 to 15 percent of your practice time. It might be less, depending on uh, how, how long you're practicing. All right. So that's the first thing. Uh, let's go on. I have another question right here, and then I'm going to get to some of the, the live questions. The, the next question is, how can I improve endurance for repeating hymns in the church service? This is a great question. Ooh, somebody liked that question. Yeah, um, because if we've ever played hymns in the church, we know what that's like. It's just repeating over and over, and then it's like, oh, you know, it doesn't it doesn't have to be high notes that that wears us out. It's normally the half notes and the 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 long notes, the whole notes and the half notes that wear us out. So, yeah, in the hymn, this is what I'm going to recommend. 
don't come in right away. That's a great, great piece of advice. Um, you're, you'll last longer, but it's also a very wise musical choice. So think about this. You're not going to fatigue the ear of the listener if you're not coming in right away and playing the, the whole song for six minutes or whatever it is. So this is my recommendation. Maybe come in on the intro and then lay out the first uh, verse in the first course and maybe even the second verse and the second chorus, you know, uh, come in on the third chorus. I don't know what the form of the song is because we're, you know, just imagining what the song is. But you get the idea. Come in later in the song. And when the trumpet comes in, it'll be refreshing. It's like, oh, there's a trumpet. It's refreshing. And it draws the listener in. And a uh, new feeling comes over everybody that's under your sound. Right. So that's a very musical choice to make. And in the process, it'll help your endurance. Now, if you know how many um, choruses you're going to play ahead of time, make sure that you're in on the last chorus so that the song ends strong. And you'll have a little more stamina because you didn't come in right away and you didn't play for six minutes. You play for two. All right. So that's my recommendation. Church hymns do wear you out. I can relate to that uh, yes all right next question i have for you here is in a big band how do i play lead and play solos that is very challenging as well and another great question this is going to take some communication uh, between you and your your band leader have the conversation say in your own way say i have a demanding job as the lead trumpet player and I want to play a solo, uh, but I need a rest. So I'm recommending that you request in your own way <laughs> to play third trumpet or fourth trumpet or one of those section parts right before you have to play your solo. The song before you have to play your solo. Request to play one of those lower section parts. Now, if you have the luxury of having a, a lot of people in your section, you might not even have to play at all if that's a possibility in your scenario and then you can come in on your solo do a good job and return to the lead book and that's what i recommend uh it, it really does take a special player if you if you look around uh there aren't many players uh, compared to I, i'm filtering myself sorry guys i do this all the time but uh, normally you'll see lead trumpet players and that's what they do You'll see soloists, and that's what they do. And both can do the other thing, but normally it's not as well as the primary thing they chose to develop. And there's a reason for that. It is demanding on the face. And it's a totally different skill set. But that's what I recommend. Have that conversation with your band leader. Great question. Um, one more. And uh, I'm going to go to the comments live. So get your comments in hi david it's good to see you from switzerland thanks for coming in david is a student of mine i appreciate you david and i just answered your question i think you sent that question in that i just uh read um cheers from portugal thanks for checking in and tony it's good to see you it's been a long time my friend all right so let's continue uh, i got another question for you here All right. Since I am building muscle in my face, should I take a day off? I love this question. I have to read this uh, full question. The short answer is yes, you should take a day off because the human body is made to rest. You know, if you read the scriptures on the seventh day, God rested. So what should we do as humans? <laughs> we should definitely rest. The, 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 the trap is resting for a day and then wanting to rest two days and three days. And then you're like, man, I haven't practiced in a week. Don't fall into that trap. But resting for a day is great. But there's more to this question. And I need to read this question to you. It's very good. It says, when I train with weights for strength, I don't work the same body part two days in a row. I need to let the muscles recover for a day or two. 
that's good. So he says, since I'm trying to build a muscle in my face, should I work on it every day or take a day off? And so that's the context uh, for the question. Um, when you train with weights, you need to take days off. You never, and this is what the person is saying. I think they know this. You, when you train it with weights, um, you don't train the same body part twice in a row because you need it to rest. That's true. But I want to say it is possible to, to exercise every day um, and get the benefits of what you need. Uh, I can say this a different way. There are multiple types of strength. So I want you to compare, for example, the strength of a bodybuilder to uh, the strength of a ballerina. The ballerina is strong, too, but the ballerina has developed a different type of strength. The ballerina needs uh, different muscles to work well so that she can perform. And uh, the bodybuilder, same is true for, for him. All right. Now, think about a bodybuilder like one that competes. All right. In the phys in the physique of a, of a person that competes. And then think about a professional ballerina. Both are in shape, all right, but they're different. But what I like about a ballerina is a ballerina is a lot more flexible. As trumpet players, we need to be flexible. A lot of the uh, challenges that we have on trumpet, and I, and I see a lot of you over time, I've seen a lot of you, um, it comes down to flexibility. We need to spend more time developing flexibility. And to do that well, um, some things need to be in place. And I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but so be it. Uh, to have good flexibility, we're talking about having good coordination between um, our wind and our tongue. And this takes time to develop. It's not something we can fast forward through. All right. So... There are different types of strength. I can I can walk around my neighborhood every single day. I can walk for a mile. I can walk for two miles every day. That's exercise. And I'm building a different type of strength. All right, I'll get off of that. I feel like I'm rambling. But I, do you guys get the point that I'm making here? Write yes in the comments if that makes sense for me. All right. All right, I'm, go I'm going to move on. Love this question. Thanks, Bruce. I see you. It makes sense to Bruce. Thank you, Bruce. All right. Um, this question says, thank you, Lewis. Everybody's coming in. My, my feed is delayed, by the way. So your comment section, you see it before I see it. So this is great. All right. Here's the next question. I changed gear. My range and endurance have changed. What should I do? Who can relate to this? I think we all can. Here's the context. I switched mouthpieces about six weeks ago from a Bach 10 and a half C to a 5C. My wife says my tone with the 5C is much better, but my range is way down. I now struggle for a high C. I think I'll stick with the 5C, but need to get my range and endurance up. And so there are parts to this question I want to talk about. Uh, first, everything is connected. Everything is connected. So perform all parts of your routine daily. I just uh, spent some time talking about how important flexibility is. So I want to talk about that one part. What if we ignored flexibility in our daily routine? One day, if you ignore your flexibility for one day, you might not even notice any negative consequences. But if you continue to ignore it, oh, I'm still here. I know my camera went off. All right, coming back. There we go. If you continue to ignore your flexibility, then um, other parts of your trumpet playing will begin to suffer. And you, you won't really know why. You'd be like, man, I, I was able to do this before, and now it's so hard. Why, why is it so hard now? 
you have to you have to address all parts of your plan. Okay, um, that's the first thing I want to say. So everything is connected, and the reason why I said that is because uh, the person who wrote this question said, "I need to get my range and endurance." Why is it that we always hear range and endurance in the same breath? They are related. They're they're like they're like Siamese twins. It's hard to dis, uh, connect them. Okay, but we shouldn't think about them differently. You know, we we want to be complete whole trumpet players. All right. Um, so that's what I want to say about that. Now about the gear. Uh, about the gear. When you go to bigger equipment, you're going to notice that your endurance is less than it was. And that's something you're just going to have to work with. So, again, a routine is really important. Um, I, I want to tell you this to have patience and work your routine. Your endurance will come back. If you make a drastic change, it's it's going to be a while. All right, I'll tell you that. It's going to be a while. All right. I'm going to pause right here. What questions do we have in the comments? Did you guys put question marks before your question? I'm about to find out. I'm looking for them now. I see something here. Um, let's see. Is there anything to the pivot system? I was told. I don't know what that is. I'm a 3A. As such, should pivot slightly left and up seems to help out. I never studied the pivot system, and I am aware of what you're talking about. Um, but I can tell you, I, one of my teachers um, pivoted a lot, and I I never pivoted at that point. I didn't pivot because I was taught, you know, just to keep everything still. And then I had a teacher who pivoted all the time. And I never said anything about it. I just observed. And I noticed he was getting around the trumpet just fine. And everything seemed so easy uh, to him. And so I just started to do that, too, not really knowing what I was doing. So I probably uh, was messing up <laughs> in terms of, like, technically doing things correctly. But um, I am not one to put down one type of teaching over the other type of teaching because we are all uh, in different places in our development so if something works well for you go ahead and continue to explore that and and continue to develop it and make it your own make it the best thing for you i think there is something to the pivot system i don't know what the three a is um because i never studied it and with that said um uh, JVF uh, Bryant just uh, reminded me he's asking me about the pivot system and I haven't studied the pivot system however I want to share this with you you guys are asking me so many great questions and I want to know from experience about more things so I hired a teacher I have a teacher now again and it's so exciting um, yeah so I, I digress but I just want you to know I'm somebody who continues to learn. I hired a teacher. I'm paying money to learn so that I can help you even more. That's wonderful. All right. So though that's the only question with question marks. All right. So now you guys are going to make me work to really see uh, what you want to know. Uh, go ahead and add the question marks. Can't overdo my practicing. I'm doing well if I rest. John Bolta says, I can't overdo my practicing. I'm doing well if I rest. That's true. You want to add rest in your in your playing. Um, for example, you're playing the Clark studies, for example. Don't just go from line to line to line. Just, you know, add a 10 second rest in between lines before you move on. That's a very good clue, actually, on how to improve your endurance. Um, here's a new question from Jack. How important is buzzing? Mouthpiece, lead pipe, and just the lips. Oh, my goodness. This is a great question. Um, well, I do want to keep the questions about endurance. So if you have more questions about endurance, put them in there. But this is still a good question, and I'll answer it. Um, and I know this is really a controversial topic in the trumpet community. 
you're looking at someone who buzzes. I and I told you I just got a new teacher, and he and he saw me. He said, "You have a burp <laughs> on your trumpet," and he said, "We're not going to buzz um, while we're doing while we're working together." So I was like, "Fine, you know that's fine with me." I understand both sides. Um, I I understand the benefits of buzzing, and I am a buzzer. How important is buzzing? I would say it's not as important as one might think. Um, and then if they're, if I'm dealing with two students, it might be more important for one and not the other. So, um, just like I told, uh, the other guy a few minutes ago, I forgot who, uh, the name. If it works well for you, do it. And if it doesn't stop, it's, it's that simple to me. Uh, buzzing, uh, the lead pipe. Well, let me say this. Buzzing the lips as is more about form. So you, it's important to know why you're buzzing and, and what the benefits are to each type of buzzing. If you're buzzing the lips, it's to help your form, all right? Some trouble that people have is because they have bad form, including endurance. So buzzing, uh, free buzzing with the lips can help your form. Um, buzzing the lead pipe is really great for just getting the airflow and getting used to the resistance of the trumpet. All right. And then a, a good byproduct is just loosening up the, the face here and buzzing. The mouthpiece has many, a few more benefits um, for one. You're developing your ear. A lot of people argue you can sing and that develops your ear. That's true. Um, you can learn. Um, well, you don't need to buzz to learn these things, but buzzing can help. Uh, you learn about where your tongue is supposed to be because you're taking away the trumpet so the notes don't slot the same. So you begin to become more intimate with the tongue level position. All right. So good question. Thank you, Jack. Lewis asks, should trumpet players use more than one mouthpiece for upper register notes? Oh, great question. So, this is where I am with this. Uh, when I was younger, I was taught, use one mouthpiece for everything. And here's, here's where I am today. <laughs> use the gear that helps you do your job well. The fact remains, um, it's easier to play in the upper register on certain mouthpieces. Um, the reason why we were taught to play with one mouthpiece, though, I believe is because our teachers wanted us to learn the fundamentals of trumpet playing. So the problem is uh, players use mouthpieces as a crutch and they lack fundamental. They lack the fundamental uh, exercises. They can't perform them. And so. Again, practice your routine daily, <laughs> develop the skill and you can still have the same range no matter what mouthpiece you choose. But if you um, if you have a mouthpiece that's really geared toward high register, um, you'll have an easier time. But your skill remains the same. Does that make sense? Was I clear and articulate with that answer? Um, all right. Karen ask if you had to choose one aspect of playing that separates an undergrad trumpet player from a graduate player. What would it be and why? Sorry, it's not totally endurance related. All right, got you. Um, Cameron, that's a good question. Um, everybody's environment is different. So it's kind of hard to answer. Um, I teach at a um, college right now. Um, but it's like a college where it's it's local, you know, it's not a lot of, it's not Juilliard, so I'll, I'll say that. So you got, you know, the Juilliard level and then it's everybody else, right? Um, if you're, if you're, un, if you're a graduate level, I think you just should have a, a more professional ability in terms of like, range multiple tonguing and um learning uh the, the repertoire of 
whatever it is you're going to be playing. All right. So if you're if you're choose if you're choosing um, to go the jazz route, then you know some standards. Not, but you know more than an undergraduate player, and you're able to play uh, different types of form. Uh, not only the blues, that's the fundamental part, uh, but other forms as well. Maybe an undergraduate student wouldn't know as much. Um, thank you. That's a very good question, Cameron. Let's get in. David has a good question. I've heard that to improve endurance, you should rest as much as you play. Do you agree with that theory? It is very helpful. Yes, I do. Um, it helps when you rest. It helps you to really settle and and uh, gather your thoughts and not to become overly anxious. It helps you to, to pause and think about what you're doing. So another trap that we can fall into as trumpet players is this playing for the sake of playing. Uh, but but why do we play? So taking a rest off the face physically can help us to refocus in our mind. I do agree with that theory. Um, yes, you should. Yes, you should rest as much as you play. Now, that can look a, diff a few different ways, too. Um, so, I, in, so in theory, I could... I could practice for two minutes straight and then I'll take a two minute rest. That's one way to look at it. In another scenario, I just explained um, practicing Clark number one, for example. I could play a line and then rest for the same amount of time it took me to play that line. Both are good. And another thing, uh, I was practicing uh, uh, one of these um, one of these endurance studies is not endurance. Anyway, I was practicing something and it said after the exercise, it said rest for at least one hour. You know, so yes, rest is important. All right. Let's see here. All right. So, so for my last statement, I missed the last statement. Uh, I'm having teeth work being performed. I'm still playing, but I have to not overdo playing. Okay, I lost it. I do whisper tones. Very good. Good. Whisper tones are great. It helps you to focus your armature. Um, get the form together. That's wonderful. Very good. Um, having long tones, lip slurs, and tech studies in the routine is there one i should spend more time on when working on my endurance um yeah lip slurs because i kind of talked about this a little earlier um the wind and the tongue need to really be developed like that's the the core of trumpet playing all of those things you said are important all of them. And I said this earlier, if you ignore one part, everything else is going to implode. But if I had to choose one, I would spend a little bit more time on lip slurs. And lip slurs can take you from in the staff to below the staff and above the staff in one set. So you're working on form too. If there's magic, it's in lip slurs for sure. All right. Uh, Bruce has a question. What is your daily routine to maintain, improve your endurance? Like I said before, I have a teacher now, and um, this is great. I am doing so much flexibility right now. It's ridiculous. And I, I mean, I even feel like, man, didn't I just do this? <laughs> and so I'm really being stretched um, throughout the horn. Um it's wonderful, though. I, I really feel the growth um, in, in a short period of time, relatively short period of time. All right. Yeah. And so do, doing these studies, Bruce, has actually improved my endurance, 
which is why I feel so comfortable telling um, the worshiping trumpet, uh, it's okay to spend more time on lip slurs. I'm reaping those benefits myself even right now. Okay. Uh, cool. Where did I leave off? I got a question here that came in <clears throat> before I pressed live today. How can I practice high register playing without quickly losing my chops? Guys, it came back again. Um, in terms of losing your set, slurs can be a great solution to solve this problem. So I would recommend to start with small intervals and then gradually extend your intervals. So if you're losing, um, oh, well, yeah, I, I kind of got off right there, but I, I think I still have the same answer. How can I practice higher register playing without quickly losing my chops? Yeah. I had another question here. Uh, how do I increase my endurance on trumpet? Is it only by long tones? Like, is that the only thing I do? No, it's not. You see, guys, you see how the same question keeps coming back? So I can sum everything up by, if you want, if you want to improve your endurance, begin with a nice routine. I can end just the way I started. Begin with a nice routine. What's in the routine? Um, breathing exercises. Long tones, buzzing, although buzzing is optional, flexibility exercises, um, even the finger exercises and the technical studies, that's a part of it. Um, all of those things together work collectively. Um, if you don't have a lot of time to practice, that's fine. I can show you one of my um, uh, journal entries where you can see I only spend two minutes on this, two minutes on that, three minutes on this, and then, you know, you zoom out, and it's like, you know, you practice for 45 minutes, you practice for an hour. But it doesn't have to take that long. The magic, if there is magic, is doing it every day. All right. Um, what are your thoughts on working the pedal register? Thank you, Travis. Um, I think the pedal register is um, very helpful. Why? Because, uh, again, you're you're making sure, you're working on your set. You're working on your, your armature. You're working on that wind production. And that has to be in place or you can't play the pedal. You can't. Um, pressing against your face doesn't help you play pedal tones like you can't cheat that like you can in the upper register so i love uh practicing the pedals what are the benefits of moist lips versus dry lips well if you're moist you you're going to get a buzz it's just that simple um if your lips are dry you'll get less of a buzz um so yeah you know you lick your lips slightly i just did it right there and then you play I like Chop Saver. I don't um, wear it like all day, but I'll put it on um, in the morning or if it's an especially windy day. Okay. I don't really put it on right before I play, but if, if I put it on early in the day, um, it helps me. Cool. All right. I'm going to go with a couple of more. Oh, my goodness. Let me talk about this. Um, I downloaded your endurance PDF a month or so ago. The, the E2 at the end is killer as far as playing it in total. Any tips on getting through the three sections without stopping? All right. I hosted a live workshop. It was private, but it was live. And um, I made a PDF, and I guided the class through that. Um, and I gave very specific instructions, and then there was an etude at the end. Um, 
so that's that's the first thing about that. And then I later put that same uh, packet on a YouTube video so anybody could download it. But playing through that is not that the etude all in its entirety is not something that a person would do right off the back. You have to work up to that. So, yeah, it is killer. <laughs> it is very killer. Um, any tips on getting through the sections without stopping? You have to stop, at least at first. So my advice is to work it out in sections. Um, and then, like, be, you have to be really cool with, like, putting it away for the rest of the day. And then the next day, work out the next part. And really, it could take you weeks to get through that, depending on your... Uh, current level of ability but that's fine there's nothing wrong with that it's totally fine all right um this is fun travis says thanks chris i appreciate you travis i want to tell you guys about something really cool that's coming up um, on saturday i'm hosting a live private workshop we're going to talk about endurance further it's this weekend, Saturday, March 26th at 12.15 p.m. Central Time. It's a free class. Um, I'm going to help you solve your problems even further on this whole endurance issue. It's a free class, but you must register to reserve your spot. So don't wait. All right. If you're even slightly interested, register right now. Uh, if you can't make it live, there will be a replay, but the replay is only for the people that registered. So even more incentive to register. The link uh, is right now. It's in the description. OK, so just go in the description under this video. Click the link. Register right now. Even if you don't know if you can make it, register, reserve your spot. And like I said, there will be a replay for those who register. Um, I have like a plan I'm going to walk you through. Um, you guys are asking what uh, to practice. I'm going to show you like exactly what to practice. You're asking about rest. I'm going to show you about all of that. And um, hopefully I can even show you how to adapt uh, the exercises according to your level, your current level of ability. All right. So uh, let's see here. I want you to do that. OK, so register for this Master Your Endurance on Trumpet workshop. And as a thank you, I have my new PDF I'm going to give to you. It's called Master Your Endurance on Trumpet. Learn the three reliable steps that truly help build endurance on trumpet at all levels. We talked about some of those things today, um, but I get a little bit more detailed in that PDF. It's a free gift when you register for the class. So I want to say thank you for spending time with me today. Register for the class this weekend. I'll see you there. And until then, go ahead and click or tap on the video on the screen. Continue watching videos on the channel. Continue, continue your learning. And I'll see you soon. God bless you.